for this opportunity. I realize, God, this morning that we need your help. Lord, I realize who you are, and God, I realize what I am. And God, I pray that you'd help us this morning. God, cleanse us, forgive us of sin and failure. And God, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will move around this church. Lord, I pray that you'd move behind this pulpit. God, and up and down the aisles, I pray the Spirit of God would speak to our hearts, Lord, through the Word of God. Lord, we realize we're living in the last days of time, and God, we understand, Father, this morning, that God, God's people, Lord, should be thankful to be at church, and be thankful to be in the house of God, and be thankful to be able to worship. And God, let us do that today. Again, help us, Lord. I can do nothing without Thee. But God, Your own Word tells us we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I pray right now, God, you'd strengthen us today. God, do that which I can't do. Move me out of the way. Lord, I pray the Spirit of God would take over. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 102 and 103, and I'm just going to read a few verses out of both chapters. If I, I title my message this morning, From a Sparrow to an Eagle. From a Sparrow to an Eagle. And we read in this Psalms 102, verse number 1, The psalmist David is in despair. Uh, he's uh, having a hard time. Now, if I ask you this morning how many of you have had a hard time this week, I'm sure many of you would say I've had a hard time. It's been a hard time. i faced discouragement. i faced, I faced some heartache. I've uh, faced some despair in my life. Now, sometimes we'll go for several days and, and uh, not face any of those things, but most everybody faces some hardship. If you're a Christian... Living for the Lord, if you're saved by the grace of God and you're living for the Lord, then the devil's going to do all he can to fight you and to fight against your life for, for the Lord Jesus. So the psalmist here is in despair in this chapter number 102. And we, we find that when we read the words that he said. And the psalmist says this, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. So he's crying out to the Lord, God, give me help. God, answer my call, answer my prayer, because I'm in despair. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. He is so in discouragement, and he is so depressed and despondent, that he himself has forgotten to eat. Now, friend, I, you know, I, there's been days in my life when I didn't care if I eat or not. Uh, there's been times when I've been discouraged and, and uh, just didn't even want to eat my food. How many of you have ever been that way? Raise your hand. I mean, sometimes it gets bad. And, the, and if you've never experienced that, friend, then uh, you know, sometime in your life you're going to if you live for the Lord. And so he's in that much discouragement that he... Uh, that he is uh, in despair, that he just did, don't even want to eat. Uh, by reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I'm like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. So here we find the condition of the psalmist. He's in despair. He's like a little lone sparrow up on the rooftop. And... Uh, uh, those little birds sometimes if they've lost their mate then they get they are in despair and they're despondent and and uh, they do, you know they are as cheerful most of the time the sparrows are pretty cheerful birds around our house they eat on the feeder they sing their songs but he's as a sparrow that's on the housetop that's just walking about in despair we see the rest of these verses as the psalmist begins we're not going to read those you read them later. But we see the rest of these verses down through verse 28. The psalmist starts to reason with himself. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have to reason within ourselves. We have to think about things. And I, I get alone sometimes and I just think things over. And the psalmist, he began to make some notes and, and, and compare what God had done for him and think of the good things. Even though he's in despair, he begins to reason with himself. Maybe why this has happened, why things are going on the way they are in, in his life. And uh, you read these and, and we find him groaning in despair. But down toward the end of the chapter and beginning with chapter number uh, 103 verse 1, the psalmist has a whole new tone about his voice. He has a whole new spirit that is lifted within him. 
And the psalmist says, in spite of all that's going on in my life, the psalmist says, bless the Lord. Amen. He says, bless the Lord. And friend, I promise you today, if you and I will bless the Lord, then no matter what's going on in our life, God will bless us and God will help us and God will lift you up out of that pit that you're in, out of that despondency and out of that despair if you'll just begin to praise the Lord. I've told you this story before about this man that was preaching, uh, I forget his name, but he was preaching in a big uh, conference, you know, and there was preachers everywhere and this was the only preacher in the house that that didn't have any dignity about it. Amen. Under the Lord, I wish some of us would lose our dignity. Amen. And he would sit there and somebody would say something good and he'd say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And uh, he was the only one doing that, but he was trying to worship God and he was agreeing with what the preacher was saying and he, once in a while he'd say, Bless the Lord. And it, he was going to preach soon, you know, and he was trying to encourage the other preachers along and uh, right before it got time for him to preach, one of the other preachers came to him. He said, you're going to have to quieten down a little bit. He says, we, we, you just can't be in here. This is a conference. This is a Bible conference, and, and you can't be just blessing the Lord. Now, unto the Lord, why do we come to church? To praise Him. Now, I know not many of you are very vocal, but some of you are, and I appreciate that. But it's come out somewhere, amen. If you just waved your hand once in a while to let me know you're listening, I'd appreciate it. But anyway, here's what he was doing. And he, he right before he was about to preach, he was sitting there on the front pew, some old, some old mossy-haired, you know, mossy back uh, preacher that hadn't failed to touch a God in a hundred years, but he had all the words right. He could say everything just right. He come over and he whispered to him. He said, now, preacher, now you're going to have to calm down just a little bit. We can't have all this going on in our conference, and you're just going to have to calm down. Well, the old preacher sat there, and that took all the wind out of his sails. There he had been trying to sit there, and he'd been trying to, he'd been trying to worship the Lord, and he'd been trying to encourage the other preachers along. Then some old mossy back comes by and tells him, now, preacher, you can't do this. Amen. Unto God, what did he do? He sat there. He said, I just sat there. He said, I sat there for a few minutes, and he said, I began to ponder my heart. And he said, I sat there for a little while. He said, I got up off my seat, and he said, I said, bless the Lord anyway. Amen. He said, in spite of you all, I'm going to praise God. Amen. In spite of what the world says, I'm going to bless the Lord. And he got up and he preached the house down. Amen. I tell you, friend, we ought to get rid of our dignity sometimes, and we ought to get rid of what of the, in our hearts what we're thinking somebody might say about us and worship the Lord. And the psalmist says, bless the Lord. He says not only bless the Lord, but he says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's saying from the depths of what's within me, he's saying praise the Lord. He's saying bless God. And to, and to say bless the Lord means that we are in ad adoration of him, that we're in love with him, that we thank him for all that he's done for us, and that with our whole heart we're blessing God. Saying bless the Lord. You know, we walk by people and we'll, we'll say, God bless you. Amen. We mean that too, don't we? But we ought to more say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And he says, with all that is within me, bless his holy name. Everybody stand up a minute. Come on, I'm going to get you moving. I'm going to get you doing something. Amen. If it kills you and hair lips the devil. Amen. Everybody say with me this morning, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All right, here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. All right, you're breathing. Sit down. Amen. I know by that everybody in here is breathing. Amen. I know you've got a voice about you, but we ought to be blessing the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to be with the psalmist David. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And then he says this, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What's God done for you? Amen. What has the Lord done for you in your moment of despair, in your moment when you seem like everything's going to go wrong and nothing's going right, and you think, I've got nothing that I can bless the Lord about. You be I think that's what the psalmist began to do. I believe he began to sit down and begin to think in his despair. I believe he began to think of, well, you know, look what God's done for me. Look where I was and what I am. I, he said I was in a mire pit of sin and he lifted me out. I was deep in despair and God came along where I was at and he lifted me out. Friend, I'm telling you, when you begin to think of the benefits, I'm going to have to take a break. 
When you begin to think of the benefits of God, I'm telling you, friend, you can't help but blessing God. And he said, forget not all his benefits. Now, I'll get to the message here in a minute I'm introducing to you, all right? He said, I bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Hallelujah, I'm saved by the grace of God. My sins are forgiven. Amen. That's a benefit of God that you have. And who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. He has gone from feeling like a sparrow to feeling like an eagle. That sparrow is a little lowly bird that run around on the housetop, and the eagle is one of the one of the uh, the most majestic birds that you'll ever see soaring into the heights of heights. And he's there, and he looks good, and he feels good, and he gets above all the mess of the world. And there he is, the eagle soaring above all of it. Friend, I don't know what you're facing in your life. I don't know what you might be about to face in your life. But I know one thing. God didn't, God didn't intend for us to be on the dirt. He intended us to soar like an eagle, amen, above the fray of this world. And friends, you can do it, but only by the help of God. And you can do it when you begin to bless the Lord, oh, your soul, and all that's within you, bless His holy name. Well, I'm glad I'm saved, amen. I'm glad I know him. And I'm glad in these days we live in that sometimes all I have to do is begin to bless the Lord and he helps me. So what do we see in these verses? We see that as sincerity, as in sincerely as we can, we should bless the Lord. And I know people, and I've got someone on my mind right now that's, that really bothers me. He'll, he'll, he'll praise the Lord while he's around me. And he'll tell me all the good things that, uh, you know, that the Lord's done and, and, and uh, you know, stuff, things like that about going to church and all that. But he gets away from me and he curses and uses every foul name you can uh, think of and, and all of that. That's hypocrisy. And friend, I want to tell you something. That does nothing but drag the name of the Lord in the mud into the dirt. And God's not ever going to honor that. But I think of others that when you see them today, they'll praise God. And if you see them and give them a hat to change tomorrow, they'll praise God. To adore the Lord Jesus Christ and to bless the Lord, it should be done out of sincerity. And then we should bless the Lord affectionately with great gratitude and love for Him. We bless Him with great affection. I love my wife. And I tell my wife I love her. And sometimes I give my wife a kiss and tell her I love her. That's with affection. But we ought to tell the Lord we love Him. And we ought to be with great affection when we adore Him with our hearts. And when we bow before Him, say, God, I love you. Lord, I love you. I'm not, listen, I'm not coming to you with any, anything at all today but to love you. And that's what the psalmist is doing in this psalm. He's saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's not making supplication for anything that he wants in his life. But he's praying to God and he's making He's making his prayer of adoration. He's making his prayer of blessing to God. He's making it known. Bless the Lord on my soul. We should bless the Lord affectionately and show our gratitude and love for Him. And it should be something that we do at all times. I will bless the Lord, uh, oh my soul, and all that is with me. Bless His holy name. And that should be something that we do at all times. We should bless the Lord. Say, preacher, sometimes I don't feel like it. Friend, I want to tell you something. Sometimes I don't feel like it. But I find out if we bless the Lord that He'll bless us. Now, we, we bless Him and it should be a constant thing in our lives. And we should bless Him with our lives. Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. God, use me for Thy glory. Lord, help me to walk in Thy footsteps. God, help me to follow thy word and we bless him uh, for his, with our lives that we give our hearts to him. We should bless the Lord for the, uh, for the death of his son. That's something to bless. Lord, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me and for forgiving me of my sins. And we should do that with all that's within us. Now look, it's easy to do other things with all that's within us. Am I right? It's easy for me 
to go hunting and go down there and get up at, at uh, uh, 6 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock, depending on where I'm going, and get up and go out and sit there on a tree. And, boy, that's exciting. People said, how in the world that's boring? Is it all get up? No, it ain't. It's fun to me. And if sometimes that's easy, and I'll put everything into it for a little while. Then I get bored and get down and go back and eat something and go back and hunt again. Amen. That's the way I do things. But I want to tell you what, if we ought to put our everything into everything we're doing, we ought to put that into what we're doing for the Lord. When we pray, we ought to pray with all that's within us. When we worship, we ought to worship with all that's within us. And you're here today and your heart's filled with joy because you're a child of God. And if it's not, it ought to be filled with joy because you're a child of God and we ought to be willing and ready just at any moment to bless the Lord. Amen and have it a constant thing, and have it something that comes from the depths of our soul. And then I'll give you about ten things, no, about eight things this morning, seven, let's narrow it down to seven, and then we'll be done. Why should we bless the Lord? First of all, we should bless the Lord for all His benefits. Now remember, David has come from the place of feeling like a sparrow on a housetop to the place where he feels like an eagle that soars above the fray. Why? Because he has got in touch with God. And how did he get in touch with God? He got in touch with God by, by calling upon his name and by, and by blessing God and by praising him and by worshiping him. And he says, forget not all his benefits. Psalm chapter number 68 and verse number 19. We find this, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Listen, bless the Lord. Now you'll find that phrase, bless the Lord, 18 times in the whole Old Testament. None in the New Testament. And we find that that it is it is uh, only three times uh, in the in a, in any other book but the book of Psalms. And here it is again in the book of Psalms: "Blessed be the blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. He loadeth us daily with His benefits." Now listen. Sometimes we're loaded down by burdens. Sometimes we're loaded down by care. But I want to tell you what's easier to do for him is cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. And when we cast our burden upon him, then he casts the burden of all his benefits upon us. He daily loadeth us with his benefits. You know what he is load something up? Amen. You keep shoveling it on. Amen. You keep piling it on. And that's what God does for me and you. If we'll let Him and allow Him to do it in our life, He will daily load us with His benefits. So we ought to praise the Lord. We ought to bless Him for all His benefits. And they being this, we ought to bless Him for forgiveness of sin. We find that in verse number 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. We ought to thank Him for saving our souls and forgiving us of our sin. You know what's wrong with the world today? It ain't politics. You know what's wrong with the world today? It ain't terrorism, although that is a problem. The problem with the world today is sin. It's a sin problem that our country's got. It's a sin problem that our world's got. And until that sin problem's cured, friend, there'll be no cure for anything else. Amen. And we have a sin problem in this country, but we ought to thank God because you're here sitting saved by the grace of God. How many saved this morning say amen? That man saved by the grace of God. And because you're saved by the grace of God, thank God, friend, you ought to lift your head toward the Lord and say, God, thank you, thank you. Bless the Lord for forgiveness of sin who forgives my iniquity. Oh, my friend, what a blessing, what a benefit of God. He daily loadeth us with his benefits. Number three, we ought to bless him for healing us. Now, you know what, friend? You, every one of you in here has been sick, and if it wasn't for the healing of the Lord Jesus, if it wasn't for His healing hand upon us, we'd all die. I got cut down the, down the other day. I was skinning a deer. I did kill one, by the way. I was, I was skinning that thing, and my knife got away from me. And, uh, and uh, guess what? I, I keep it sharp so it'll do a good job. And it doesn't know the difference between deer flesh and Gary flesh. And so I was, you know, I'm doing this number and got my hand away and that knife didn't know a bit of it and it cut me right there just a little bit. It didn't want bad no stitches or nothing because I felt the pain real quick and jerked my hand away. But I'll tell you something, that I would have died. Listen, I'm telling you, friend, things like this make me think. I bled, but the deer was bleeding, you know, where I was skinned. I didn't pay no attention to that because it just mixed in. And I didn't, I said, I'll get this done and I'll see how bad this is. 
And so I was bleeding and, and I got through and washed my hands off and I saw that little cut and it was bleeding. But I, you know, I put a little pressure on it and it quit just a little bit. But you know what? I'd have bled to death out of that little cut if it wasn't for the Lord. Now I preach, hey, I want to tell you something. I take nothing for granted. If God didn't put his healing hand upon that little cut, every drop of blood would have drained out of my body. You say, but your body naturally does that. It does that because God made it that way, and he's the one that heals me of my sickness, of my disease. Preacher, I never had thought about it like that. Well, I have. You say, well, now, now wait a minute. Now, if you get, if you get cut in a main artery or a main vein, you bleed to death. What's the difference? It's just a slower leak. If somebody had blood shooting out of their arms where they got cut in that main vein right there and, uh, you know, they got a tourniquet on it, got it all bandaged up, got it quit, they said, boy, we saved your life. But I'll tell you something, it ain't man that does that, it's God. Because it don't matter what you do, if God don't heal it, friend, we ought to bless His holy name. We ought to bless the Lord who, who forgives our sins and who heals us from our diseases. Now, God don't always do that. But, friend, when He does, we ought to be sure to give Him glory. We ought to be sure to thank Him. We ought to bless Him for His healing. We ought to bless Him for redemption uh, from, our, from our destruction. We ought to bless him in verse number 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. What does that mean, preacher? It means I was on the road to hell. I was lost without God. And I was pursuing a path. And I was headed down a path that could lead to nowhere but my demise in the, in the lake of fire. But guess what? Jesus Christ came down. The Holy Spirit of God came in. He convicted my heart of sin. And I said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now guess what I can say? Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that's within him. Bless his holy name who redeemeth me. He, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, friends. I'm glad I'm redeemed. He redeemed me. He bought me back. I couldn't pay my sin debt, but he could. And guess what? He loved me enough that he did. All of this I'm saying to you, my friend, today is because of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Bless him for redemption from our destruction. Then number five, bless him for his loving kindness. We feel to say, thank you, Lord. He's always there to say, let me help you. His loving kindness, bless him for his loving kindness, who crowneth thee with loving kindness. Friend, I'm telling you, this world is wicked. This world is full of sin. This world is full of hate. This world is full of people that are not kind one to another. I know you all heard about the story where the, uh, the, the fellows on the motorcycles, they pulled that guy out of the car up in New York and beat him right there in front of his wife and kids. There's no loving kindness. I don't care what anybody's done. There's no loving kindness in that kind of, in that situation. Or these people that go in somewhere and they kill a bunch of, there's no loving kindness in that. Or how about that one that talks about everybody else all the time? How about that gossiping tongue? And a lot of that happens among Christian people. There's no loving kindness in that. But we ought to bless the Lord that He has loving kindness for us. Amen. He never talks behind our back. Amen. He never just comes out and slanders His children. Why? Because He loves us. And we ought to bless the Lord for His loving kindness toward us. And toward mankind. Listen, his loving, because of his loving kindness is why this world exists today. Now, if you and me had been, if you or I had been, uh, you know, had the power to do what we want to do, uh, a lot of us done wiped everybody off the face of the earth. But God, in his loving kindness, brings us to this point. We ought to bless him for his loving kindness. When we fail him, he says, let me help you up. We ought to bless him for his tender mercies at the end of verse number 4. Because that he, because even man in his sin, even man in his wickedness, he loves us enough. He loved you enough that he didn't cast you into hell. That he didn't just go ahead and terminate you and get you off the face of the earth. But because of his tender mercies, God's tender mercies towards you, my friend, we had the opportunity to get saved by the grace of God. By his mercy. We're saved by His grace. We're loved by His mercy. And He had mercy on me and mercy on you and give us opportunity to call upon Him. Guess what He's doing to the world today? He's being merciful to this world. He's being merciful to this world, uh, you know, this world situation. He's being merciful to mankind. But one day, friend, that mercy is going to be cut off. He's going to say, that's enough. I've had 
about all of this that I'm taking. It's time you've drugged my name through the, through, uh, through the dirt long enough and I'll give you every opportunity in the world and that last person's going to say, I want to get in and that last person's going to get saved by the grace of God. Amen. And when that person gets saved, the body of Christ is going to be made up and he's going to say, that's it. It's all finished now. Son, go get your bride. And he, this, hey friend, when that call is made, when Jesus comes back and gets his bride, I want to tell you what's going to happen on this earth. The mercy of God is gone. The Spirit of God has departed. And it is left, the whole world, whoever's left, the whole world is left to the devil. You read it. It's there. It's in the book. We'll be covering that more here in, in the book of Revelation again on Wednesday night. But I'll tell you something. That's what the world is going to be turned over to. It's going to be turned over to the devil. And literally, friend, I'm saying literally all of hell will break out on this earth. I mean, it's literally going to happen. The gates of hell are going to be open, and those demons in hell are going to be loosed upon this earth. Oh, I'm glad I'm not going to be here. Why? Because... We're saved by God's grace. We're going home with Him. But those that are not, they're going to face the wrath of God. But why are we not now? Because of His tender mercies. When God removes His tender mercies, then, friend, all oh, everything's, everything's gone then. There'll be no hell. Oh, my friend, today, aren't you glad for the tender mercies of God? Aren't you glad Jesus gave you one more chance? Aren't you glad that he dealt with your heart? We ought to bless the Lord for his tender mercies. And then last of all, we ought to bless him for satisfaction. For satisfaction. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. Man, God satisfies the soul. I'm satisfied with my salvation. I'm not satisfied a lot of times in my life. But I'm satisfied with my salvation. I'm born again by the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, now that just happened. No, I, I think God's saying amen to that too, don't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. I ain't heard that all service. And there it is. When I say thank God, I'm glad for my salvation. I'm satisfied with my salvation. Oh, friend, God in heaven's the one that satisfies us. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied in your heart today? Do you know that your name's written in the book of life? Then you ought to say, bless the Lord. And if you're not, then you know what you ought to do? You ought to say, God, help me. I pray God have mercy on me. And you ought to fall on your face before God and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. So we see the psalmist coming to a close here this morning. After all of this, after all the, all the doubt and all the worry and all the fear in chapter 102, when his place is feeling like that of a sparrow wandering around on the housetop, we find him here as feeling like an eagle soaring in the skies, far above the fray of this world, far above the, the problems of this world. Friends, you can do that. I can do that. We're living in terrible times. The government don't know what it's doing. The politicians don't know what they're doing nobody knows what they're doing but guess what God knows what he's doing hallelujah I'm glad he does and I don't worry I don't sit at home at night I don't sit at home at night oh oh what are they going to do is the government going to open back up who cares if the government opens up doing pretty good ain't we or, or, are they going to do this are they going to do that am I going to have me in a hey, God in heaven thank God for him he's sitting up there and he ain't sitting there twinning his thumbs he knows exactly what's going on and because I'm his thank God in the worst of our days in the most desperate times of our lives if we'll just bless God we can soar as eagles there's a time in an eagle's life there's a time in an eagle's life every year when he has to molt. That eagle, he gets, he gets in, a, in a place where all his feathers have to come off. And when that time his feathers come off and he grows new feathers, he's down there and on the ground and his feathers come off and he can't fly, he's in despair. He, but when he gets his feathers back, when he gets his wings back, for that short time maybe he's down. For that short time, brother, maybe he's out. But when he gets him new feathers and when he goes through that molten process, he begins to get up, you know, and he begins to soar about and he begins to look back down where he was once and he, and he gives that call of victory and he squeals that call of victory. Why? Because he's no longer down there in the dirt. And I'll tell you sometimes, friends, we get down. And when you see your brother down, when you see your sister down in despair, we ought to be blessing the Lord and encouraging them to bless the Lord. 
We ought to be encouraging them to get up off of there and soar back with the eagles and get up. How? Book up by blessing the Lord. So where are you today? Are you as a sparrow? Or are you soaring? Have you had a rough week? Are you having problems in life? Are you facing discouragement? Are you facing depression? Are you facing things in your family you just...